First thing most important is that I'm a Muslim and then second on the list is that I'm a family man and I will be both of those even when time comes to pass and I'm maybe not a snooker player. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark from Gift Canoe. This is Rory McLeod. We're going to put the world to rights. We're going to talk about snooker and everything else we can think of. Rory, over to you. Hi, I'm Rory <laughs> McLeod. I'm a professional snooker player and I'm going to get battered by Mark. <laughs> We've played a bit of snooker. You know, I give the boy a chance when I can, but, uh, well. <laughs> uh, what about our last visit then? Well, I remember it well. I mean, I got 61 in the first game, 66 in the second, Rory. No, I don't want you to get too far ahead of yourself. I just picked you on the line, didn't I? You did. Actually, it was the foul shot that you made on the pink. We won't is. say nothing about the um, 60 start I gave you. Oh, we weren't going to mention that, <laughs> were we? <laughs> so, Rory, how did you get involved in snooker? Um, basically, when I was younger, I used to play snooker with my mate on his pool table at home. I used to play... Um, at my uncle's, he had a little four foot snooker table. Four foot one? Yeah, he had a big one as well, but he wouldn't let me on it at, no. at the time. Sure. Um, even though I could have beat all of them. Sure. But um, and then I went with a friend down to the local snooker hall, and um, he used to play every Saturday on a you know, schoolboys league. Mm -hmm. And he took me down there one time when I played there, and I loved it. Right. Um, he got me away from playing football on the outside in the winter. It was nice and warm inside, and yeah, I loved it. I've heard it was a natural. The, I've heard on the grapevine that it was a close thing whether you became a footballer or a snooker player. Well, football was always my passion. Um, you know, things happened which you know was out of my control, mm -hmm. which wasn't very pleasant. Yeah, and, no. You know, I ended up playing snooker. I ended up, you know, I was a natural. I was good at it, and I just continued with it. Didn't know that I would get to the stage where I am now even though, you know, I didn't love it. Mm. But yeah, let's see if we can get further. I mean, let's, if you think of it this way, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I checked the stats. Aren't you number 50 at the moment, 50 in the, in the UK, professional snooker players? Well, I'm not actually looked myself. Um, at the end of the day, I just want somebody to come and tell me that I'm number one. Yeah, it would happen in time, perhaps, yeah? Yeah. Imagine if you were the 50th best football player in the country. Oh, you'll be you'll a multi... Multi-millionaire, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So perhaps when it comes to life choices, the football might have been better then? Well, you know, if it was football, I'd probably be retired already. Well, you would, wouldn't you? At 43. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. No, that's mine. <laughs> Actually, I was expecting you to wear a, uh, a waistcoat today. You know, the, the one that you wear... Uh... Felt it like being a bit more casual. Cool, that's good, that's good. I, I was particularly interested to see if you're going to wear your waistcoat with the uh, ISIS uh, badge on here. Logo, right, okay. Yeah, my ISIS um, accountancy sponsor. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wearing it for the past 12 years, so when it came up about ISIS and Syria and all this mm. palaver, it was, it was kind of upsetting, really, you know, me being... A snooker player, a Muslim, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a beard, yeah, yeah, and yeah. wearing an ISIS logo. I can see where you're coming from. I mean, you're, you're nearly a foot taller than me. I wasn't sure whether I should, uh, you know, sort of uh, play with you on this one, but uh, I mean, surely it's uh, it's an unusual sort of uh, name for an accountancy firm, is it? Well, you know, there've been ISIS business accountancy for over a decade. Yeah you know, 15 odd years, if not more. I mean, I've been with them now for, you know, the best part of 14 years. Yeah, okay. So when ISIS came along, you know, a year or so ago, it was a bit daunting and, you know, I was traveling the world and wearing the logo. I think there was a couple of places I got a little bit yeah. scared about wearing it because, you know, people might just get the wrong idea and whatnot, but... Well, you could understand how they might get there. Yeah, they might get I thought, confused. I thought you were going to uh, yeah. do the uh, the thing and just drop that but you've, you've stayed loyal to it well you know like I said I've been with them for 14 years there was an odd occasion that I didn't wear it uh -huh. you know I got a bit cold feet but you know I realized that you know it's it's a bit more than that you know it's about yeah. like being loyal to who's been loyal to me so sure I think it's I think that's important yeah. it, it, it seems when it comes to picking teams with, with that and the Australian Open when you said your favorite singer was Rolf Harris you've got a bit of a knack for uh, Notoriety. Yeah. What do I you did. Think? I did change it, but you know, you? It, that was off camera. Is that it, was is after. It, is it Carly Minogue now? <laughs> well, no, it's not Carly Minogue. I don't support none of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's safer. <laughs> As a Muslim, we don't do music, so there you mm. go. 
Yeah, I suppose it could be an awful lot worse, couldn't it? You know, I thought, and I say I rewatched that uh, Australian video, and I thought, uh, yeah, mm. the um, they got me. Got you there, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, it could have been worse. I mean, I think you said that your um, your favourite song that Rolf Harris did was, was "Time Me Kangaroo." Time Me Kangaroo for... Down. <laughs> Whereas I had a nagging feeling that you might have answered uh, two little boys or something like that. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if I was in Roy's situation, and uh, it doesn't seem very likely after the, uh, the games we've played together, uh, I'd want to be able to share about what I'm going to be doing this year. So what have we got, Rory? We've got some qualifiers coming up, yeah? Yeah, before the end of the season, we've got um, a few games. I've got the Senior World Championships, which is uh, the beginning of March. Nice one. Am I getting be a ticket for that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Definitely. Um, before that, we've got the qualifier for the Indian Open and the China Open. Mm -hmm. um, straight after that, we've got the, the Welsh Championships in Newport. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be in Beijing towards the end of March, early April, if you've got tickets. I hope I'm there too. Well, you'd have to qualify first, of course. That's the job. That's what you do. Yeah. And then straight after that, we've got, um, like I say, the Senior World Championships and then the Sky Shoot Out. Um, straight after that, I think we're in Poland for an EPTC. Uh -huh. Then it goes on to we fly out to India and China. Uh -huh. Straight after that, we've got when we come back, we've got the um, World Championship qualifiers. Uh -huh. And then, you know, all being well, we are all guns blazing. I mean, obviously, everybody's going to be interested in what you're going to do with Steve Davis. Are you, are you going to beat Steve Davis on the second? Well, that's the idea. I'm there to win, so yeah. Mm. You've I'm played a few games before, haven't you? Yes, we have. I'm hoping to take him out. Are you? Fabulous. It, when I was a kid, he was all like my hero. Obviously, uh, I'm a bit older than you, but uh, you know, he he was the man of the day, wasn't he? You know. Yeah, definitely. He's a great player, great ambassador for the sport, and you know, he's he, he is a legend. Sure. Yeah. Can you see yourself doing commentary like him in the future, perhaps, if uh, if there were people interested in listening to you? He's one of the funniest on commentary that I know. I mean, when he does an exhibition, I, don't, I think he's second to none, to be honest. Um, they say Steve interests in Davis or something like but that. But they give know. him a hard time, don't they? Well, the thing is, he, he, in an exhibition, he is interesting and he will make you laugh more than probably any other sneaker player that I know. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, Enough for bigging him up. Well, no, quite. <laughs> <laughs> You're to big you up. Thanks again, Rory. It's been a pleasure. Uh, last thought, I, I hear you almost became a father last night. Yeah, the missus is having bats and hicks as we speak. Oh dear. Do you think perhaps you should be somewhere else? Well, you know, it was touch and go whether I was coming or not. <laughs> <laughs> but I managed to creep out. <laughs> well, obviously, obviously this is important to you. And it, it obviously gave you a chance to chat as well, which is something that you're not scared of, I'd say. Well, you know, you know me, we love to talk. Indeed we do. Thanks again. <laughs>